Hello everyone, Professor Toybox here with Sorcerer's Apprentice Mickey, and we're back in my Fantasia Toy Box for another episode of Toy Box Tutorials. Today we're going to look at two creativity toys for setting up areas of interest in the Toy Box, the trigger area and the dynamic trigger. But before we look at those, I want to share my plan for this series over the next month or so. During the past weeks, we've been looking at a bunch of different creativity toys and some of the basic parts of a toy box, and I think we've reached the point where we can start putting all of this together and building Mickey's first mission. It's about time, huh? So we're going to do that over the next three to four weeks as I introduce a few more commonly used toys, which we'll need to construct this mission. One of the first tasks for Mickey is going to be saving the village. And when you first come into the toy box over there, and you cross the bridge, uh, and you enter the village, I want there to be brooms running amok all over the place and terrorizing the villagers and causing all kinds of mischief. And Mickey's task will be to save the villagers from the brooms by gathering the villagers together and bringing them to a place of safety. So the first thing I want to do as I start building this mission is to add enemies. And if I come in over here to spark mode, I've already dropped an enemy generator here, and I've dropped some locators around the village where I want those enemies to appear. And as we saw last time, we can come in here and set this up, new locator connection, and connect each of these locators to the enemy wave generator. And this will be the uh, generator that we'll use to spawn enemies inside the village. And I'm going to go ahead and set this up again, just because it's useful for you to see how we do this. Especially for those of you following this series, and this is all fairly new to you. So I don't want to skip over this. I had been thinking I would just go ahead and set all that up ahead of time, and refer you to the video from two weeks ago. But then I thought, well, it's probably better to see this, um, how it all goes together from scratch. And that way uh, you can follow it, and uh, hopefully the more times you see it, the more you'll remember it, and the easier it'll become to follow along when you use this in your own toy box. I think I got one more over there in the back corner. So you can see I'm connecting up a lot of different locators because I want the uh, location of the brooms to be unpredictable. Uh, they're going to be spawning several times when I'm all done. Alright, and then we'll come into the logic menu for the enemy wave generator, and we'll configure the wave, and we'll add some new enemies, and we'll come down to the broom. And as we did before, I'm just going to put one broom in here for right now, just so I don't spend my entire video <laughs> battling enemies. And we come into Properties, and I'm going to have it generated a random locator, no countdown, no delay, and we'll leave the generation effects on. So there we go, we have our enemy wave generator set up. Now we need some way to kick it off. And I don't want the enemies to show up until we actually enter the village, or the mission to start for that matter. And uh, so that brings us to the two toys I want to talk about today, the trigger area and the dynamic trigger. Both toys can be found inside the Creativity Toys drawer, and both of these allow you to set up areas of interest in the toy box, and the area I'm interested in is the village. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this down right here in the gateway for the village. And you'll note there's two little uh, yellow markers on each corner of the toy box. There's one, or the trigger area, sorry. One over on that corner and one on this corner. And so you'll notice the little menu in the lower right corner. I can press B on the Wii U to move that. And now I can move this around and create a trigger area that's the size that I want. And I'm going to fill one here with the gate into the city. And as we come down inside and look at this, uh, we open the logic menu. You'll note there's no properties. There's just the ability to specify a logic connection. And when we pick that, you have two trigger signals that this area will broadcast. One when something enters it, and one when something exits it. 
Um, if I select Entered, for example, um, you can have a number of different actors trigger this. You can have any of them in this list, or it can be triggered when a player enters it, an AI like an enemy, a specific team. This could be a player that's on a particular team or an enemy AI that's on a particular team, or a physics ball like a bowling ball or a hockey puck, or a vehicle like a, a car or an airplane. And so I want this to trigger when the player enters this area. And it could be any player. And so when any player enters that area, I'm going to come over to my enemy wave generator and generate the wave. And so now if we come back out here, now when we pass through this area, We'll have an enemy actually spawn in here. There he is. <laughs> Kicking my butt. Hey, die. There we go. My goodness. Okay, so that happened when I passed through the area. And just like the Dunbrock Gate from a couple of weeks ago, if I walk through that area again, another enemy will spawn in here. And uh, so that works fairly well. You can do that when something enters that area or again when something exits it. And uh, you'll see one problem already, I'm sure, is what happens if I hop over the wall to get into the village. Well, now I haven't past that trigger area at all, I've actually gone around it, and so nothing happens. And that's one of the downfalls of the trigger area, is that uh, you want to use this in a spot where a player has to go through this. So a better place to use something like that, and I'm going to take that out because that's not what we're going to use, but a good place for something like that might be over here at the cave, for example, where the player has to come through, whoops, over here, has to come through the cave entrance in order to get into the cave. So if we had an enemy generator set up inside the cave, this would be a great place to put this trigger area and to use that because a player has to come through here in order to enter the cave. So trigger areas are typically best um, to use when uh, you've got a natural choke point, like a cave entrance or a door or something like that. Uh, one more thing I want to talk about, and I'll just go ahead and put another one down here because I forgot to mention this a moment ago. Let's assume this was still there from before and hooked up to the enemy wave generator. If I only wanted that to go off one time, I could come into the enemy wave generator and do a new logic connection. When the wave is generated, I can come over to the trigger area, and you'll notice the logic connections available for this. So there's two things I can direct this trigger area to do. One is I can activate it. One is that I can deactivate it. And so if I only wanted this to work one time, then when I pass through here and it triggered the enemy wave generator, I could then come down uh, when the wave was generated and come back and deactivate the gate. And then passing through it would only work one time. So that's the trigger area, and you'll get to see some additional examples of that in future videos in the very near future. Um, but for an open area like this, a trigger area is not usually too good, because you'd have to essentially drop this down here in the corner, and then stretch the entire trigger area out to fill up the whole village. And we can do that but it makes selecting things inside the village a lot more difficult. And so it's better in that case to use a dynamic trigger. And so we'll come over here a little further in the Creativitoys drawer. And you'll find that over here next to the logic gate that we talked about last time. So I'm going to drop this right here temporarily. And the dynamic trigger basically sets up an area uh, around an object. By default, the dynamic trigger creative toy itself. So it'll set up a radius around this, a circular area. And if we come into the logic menu for this, 
There are two properties for this. Number one is a target, which by default is this toy, this creativa toy. But you can set up an area of interest around a player, around an actor, like a townsperson or an enemy, or a locator. And so usually I don't like to leave the creativa toys like this out in the middle of the toy box by themselves, because again, they don't really fit the theme. And so I'm going to drop a locator down. And I'll come over here to the locator. And we'll connect this up to a locator. And I want to center this in the village. So this would be about the center this direction. And this would be about the center in that direction. So that locator is now at the center of the village. And I'm going to go ahead and connect the dynamic trigger to that. So just like the enemy wave generator, we open the logic menu and select new locator connection. We come over to our locator and make that our location. And connecting that isn't enough. We have to come over here into the properties for the dynamic trigger and change the target to be the locator. And so now this trigger distance will be the area not around this toy, but around this locator. And that trigger distance um, right now is set at 10. And what that means is a little bit vague because um, it's not really clear what that refers to. Uh, but basically, if we go down to the blocks drawer, This is one square block. That is not the unit that's in the dynamic trigger, which you might expect. There's actually four of the units to one block. So if you set the trigger distance inside the dynamic trigger to four, what you would get is the distance from this end of the block to that end of the block. And so you kind of have to do a little bit of a measurement here. So we'll come over to our dynamic trigger, and that's one block, two blocks, and I'm measuring the distance from that locator to the wall. That would be three blocks, four blocks, five blocks, six, seven, eight blocks, basically. And since it's a radius, it's going to curve, which would mean this tree, for example, would be outside the circle. And so I want to extend this beyond this a little bit. So we're going to do 9 blocks, and we'll do 10, let's do 12. So we'll do out to here. So that would be the distance, would be 12 blocks, and there are 4 units for every block. So 12 times 4, come in here to the properties, to the trigger distance, and 12 times 4 would be 48. So I'm typing that in my Wii U screen. That would be our trigger distance. And if we wanted to, we could round that off to 50. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't have to be too exact. So now we've set up a 12 block radius around this trigger. Ah. <laughs> around that locator. And so now, just like the trigger area, we can come in here and do a new logic connection and when entered by same choices as before, any of them in the list or a player, enemy AI, a team member, physics ball, or a vehicle, and we're going to do player any. We'll come over to our enemy wave generator and say generate the wave. And so now it doesn't matter whether we come in through the gate or we come in over the wall. Either way, that gets triggered and there's our enemy. So that worked out pretty good. Now, just like before as well, we can come over here to the enemy wave generator and if we only wanted to do that one time, I can say a new logic connection when the wave is generated, we can come over to our dynamic trigger and we can turn this dynamic trigger on or off. 
This is basically the same as activate and deactivate on the trigger area that we looked at a moment ago. So I can turn that off so that this would only happen one time. Of course, when you turn that off, if you ever need to turn it back on, you have to have a logic connection to turn that back on. So there's our enemy. And he's been defeated. And now when we leave this area, I'll make sure I go far enough that that happens. And turn around and go back. That dynamic trigger is now off and no new enemies will show up in the village. So basically a trigger area works well in a small confined space where you know a player has to go through it. Um, and an open area like this, a dynamic trigger is a little bit better choice because then it doesn't matter which direction a player enters this, whether they're walking, whether they're flying, it doesn't matter how they enter the area, um, it'll always trigger the enter and, and leave. And uh, one last thing to talk about is if you're looking at performance, probably the best performance you're going to get is out of the trigger area because the trigger area is just a simple bounding box. And if you remember your basic trigonometry, that's simply a matter of whether your X coordinate is greater than that or less than that, your Y coordinate's greater than that, less than that, your Z coordinate is greater than that and less than that. So that's just a very simple check. Whereas the dynamic trigger is setting up a circular radius around the perimeter of this town. And so to determine whether something is inside of that or not, you've got a, some multiplications and divisions. You're dealing with pi and the circumference and radius of the circle. And so the mathematics get a little bit more intense and the processing unit inside of your console or PC has to work a little harder. And so if you have your choice, you might defer to this. But again, having three or four dynamic triggers in your toy box isn't going to slow it down too much. If you had a dozen or 20 or so of these, then you might start to notice some performance degradation. Whereas the trigger areas, you could probably have 50 of these in there and not notice too much of a slowdown in your toy box. So that's something to be aware of. So I think that's everything I want to cover today about setting up areas of interest. We'll be using these two toys again throughout this series as we go along, and um, you'll get to see ex additional examples of them. Uh, next time we're going to talk about townspeople, and we'll add the villagers that Mickey needs to rescue. Uh, meanwhile, please give this video a like if you found it helpful, and be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel or sign up on my blog so you don't miss my next episode. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.